So for all of you out there who are still wondering the year 2018 of all eras, if you should go back to the community, first of all, let me preface this by I'm giving a shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson and specifically his hangouts, of which I've been um, on some of them as of late. So shout out to him for that. One of which called Who Are the Real Alphas of the Black Community? I'm paraphrasing that, of course. Um, we discussed and delve into what makes an alpha male versus the pseudo-alpha males that have been running around for the past 30 years and getting away with calling themselves alpha males. And this obviously um, diverted into talking about should we go back to the community how, or how do you feel about that? And for all of you who've been on my channel for a bit, you all can probably guess where I stand with that, which is an emphatic no. I don't have the echo box like Obsidian, but I'll just make do what I got. But here's the thing. I described to the panel on if, and, and I mean if, you are adamant about going back to the community. You have to follow these things. And quite frankly, yes, quite frankly, if you aren't, excuse me, my bad about the hour juice. If you aren't following these tenets, then I'm out of the list. Then going back to the black community, or the community, excuse me, going back to that cesspool known as the, the former corpse of the so-called black community. You're wasting your time at best and you're setting yourself up for failure, danger, and perhaps um, your own mortality at worst. But if you insist on going back, you have to follow these steps. First, make sure you live far away from the community that you're helping or any community in general. If you're willing to help a group of individuals get out of their scenario, that's going to make a certain group of people feel some sort of way. And especially if you yourself have some sort of financial success or even social success. I mean, uh, word spreads around quick in very provincial and shiftless communities. I mean, yeah, the people may not go anywhere, but word spreads around like wildfire. And you will be the target of a lot of people who tend to hold the community down. Your Pookies, your Ray Rays, your Day Days, Man Men's, Little Twins. And in many cases, it won't be these people themselves who will cause you harm or give you crap. A lot of these men or males will mess with you on the behest of the so-called queen, the so-called uh, Mother Earth. A lot of these men will do their bidding and try to screw around with you in any sort of way they can, especially if these women have the children who are being mentored by you. And let's not talk about the constant jokes that haunt the community of what happens when somebody gets something of substance or a value. I mean, you have to sneak it in overnight. And there's no if ands, or buts around it. I mean, if you have an HD TV, you better buy, if you buy it at 3 p.m., you better hide it in your trunk and move it in the house at 3 a.m. Because if you move that thing in the middle of the day or even during the evening, the nigga's going to know. And, and trust me, <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. I mean, and if you want a better example of a person who tried to help his community and paid the ultimate price for it, no, look no further than DJ Sack. Uh, DJ Sack, I, I did not hear about this guy. and I know his name is Sack. I'm not sure if it's DJ Sack, but a um, guy out of Chicago was reporting on events in the community, trying to bring up rappers. And, and for the most part, it, it seems like he was doing this from a standpoint of being genuine when you get exposure for his community, for his, his friends, for his neighborhood. But apparently, he was shining too much. He was getting too much publicity, notoriety, and attention. And a couple of um, Dindus felt a certain way about it. 
and it ultimately cost him his life. So make sure you are far away from the community, especially the one where you're mentoring the children. Second step, you mentor boys only. These girls out here, yes, you, you can teach, a man can teach a girl how to be a lady, but a woman, as much as we have to admit it, a woman is best suited to teach a girl how to be a woman. Just in the same way that, yes, a mom or a woman can teach a boy how to be a male or a fellow, but she cannot teach him how to be a man. You, if you insist, only mentor boys. There are things that we as men can do, can instill, and can teach that a woman cannot, and in many cases, will not teach. And obviously, we can come up with a dozen things about what we can teach that women can't. But let's talk about some of the things right quickly of what women will not teach that we can and usually will. One of the main things is how to deal with life. Women have been spoiled, especially in Western society, in ways that even they can grasp. Whereas men of all races have, have had to work, for the most part, on the rewards prizes, financial standing, jobs, um, academic earnings, whatever we gain in life. Also, the biggest thing that women will not teach, even though they are in a great position to do so, especially today's women, that men are willing to teach boys, is how to deal with women, girls and women at that. We all know the reasons why women are, will, are not willing to teach most men on how to deal with women. It's because they need them. They need them to be blind. They need them to live in bliss. Uh, if we, as a country, as a society, had a limited amount of simps or people who brought or bought into the BS that women preach every single day, then women would panic, particularly today's Western women who, even though they say they're feminists and they're independent, they're more reliable on men now than ever. So that that's, if nothing else, that's why you only want to mentor boys. And yes, one of the things you want to mentor boys on is about how to deal with women. It's about game. It's about life in general. And that's going to be one of the important things on what I'm about to talk about, ne uh, not next, but in a bit later. The third step, you're going to have to go in and have the plan on having the neighborhood be improved. Now, I don't mean just improved by having a new basketball hoop and court or whatever, or having um, safe street. Um, night watches and you know, all, all that, all these platitudes that mean nothing in the end. You're going to have to go in with the mind of having this neighborhood gentrified in the long run. If you can teach a group of men to resolve issues to the point of then committing less crimes, of showing them different ways of life, if you can do that on a mass scale, I know a lot of men can, but if you have the ability to do so, if you have that reach and can really make a neighborhood improve, then that's going to get the attention of a lot of people from the outside, even to the point of getting a lot of investors from the outside. And who knows what can become of that? Uh, the, the private school, I, I will bet you this. There's a private school in Chicago, an all-black boy school, at a 100% graduation rate. And most of them ended up going to college. I think the rest went to the military or perhaps trade school. Watch 
that neighborhood, as long as they keep those numbers of gra- of 100% or damn near 100% graduation rates, watch that neighborhood for the next 15 to 20 years become a gentrified hotspot. That is the effect that you want to go in and have, especially if you own property in that neighborhood, which, by the way, you tell no one about that. Nobody. But that's the mindset you have to go in when it comes to giving back to the community. Also, and this is the second to last one, so show them your world. Now, this goes back to point one. If you're following directions of not living in the so-called community, but you want to take these kids, these boys, take them out of their environment and show them the environment that you live in. Show them the places you stay at. Not, not exactly your place. Show them the wealth that is in your neighborhood. And in your everyday life. Show them. If, if you have a nice car. Show them that. Let them, let them have a, a ride in it. Let them know what it's like. To taste. Affluence. And in some cases influence. Let them know. What it's like. Especially if you have a hot chick. Especially if she's. Outside the race. If you know what I mean. Uh, show her off to him. Introduce, introduce the boys to her. And that's if, if, if the chick that you're with isn't a floozy and is going to sleep with any 15, 16, or 17-year-old like she's a freaking teacher in these public schools. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to show your world to them. As a matter of fact, bring them to your world. I, I know it, it's effective to an extent when you go to their world and play basketball or show them how to play chess or play video games with them or um, do all this other stuff. But in the end, all they see is a random ass dude mentoring them in their world. If you want to be real effective, bring them to your world, even if you do the same things that I mentioned above. But more importantly, what you want to show them is the peace of mind The influence, the affluence, and just the stability that is that that is the case outside of these ghetto neighborhoods. And on uh, note of that subject, this is what a lot of drug dealers do in order to get the young generation to be a part of their gangs. You got the pen, the um, you got the pimp who rides in like the the latest newest car and has all this flashy clothing and has all this money on him you have to play that game to an extent even if it's the flash money I, well I, actually i wouldn't even recommend flashing money I, skip that step because you don't want to be robbed you don't you don't want to be robbed um, or you don't want to be set up to be robbed but show them what's outside of the community eye And last but not least, all these steps that I've told you is for the final step. And that is creating sleeper cells. Now, a lot of people who know what sleeper cells are are going to shriek at that word. But let me explain. For guys who don't know what sleeper cells are, um, sleeper cells are essentially agents or in the post-9-11 world, terrorists who basically are trained to do a certain task or attack, in the case of terrorists, but they wait it out until the proper moment, whether it's from their organization or whether an event shows itself as a particular opportunity or the perfect opportunity, the perfect storm, in order for the attack to be carried out. What you want to do is create a positive sleeper cell, an EL sleeper cell. EL, yes, I mean educated, you know what, sleeper cell. A classic man sleeper cell. A a non-ghetto black male sleeper cell. And what are these kind of sleeper cells, Um, Clutch? Good question. 
These are the sleeper cells that will stand up, stand against the grain, and tell the community, no, no, I, I will not take care of Day Day and Pookie and Ray Ray, Young Jizz, Illuminati, Young Illuminati, Man Man, June Head, Jar Head. I will not take care of their kids. No, and I know that sounds contradicting from what you're doing in this community, but I'm, and I didn't tell you to do this. I did not tell you to go back to the community tie and take care of those kids. But if you are, you got to follow those steps to create the perfect storm that I like to call the EL sleeper cell. Uh, I know I, I'm saying it like that because it's catchy and it rhymes. But the EL sleeper cell will tell Bone Quisha and Sharkisha, no, I will not take care of another man's kids. No, I will not be an entertaining wannabe dope boy thug in order to impress you. No, I will not speak ebonics. I will not act niggified to stay in your good side and, and your safe graces. No, I, I will not take care of you when you're old and worn out and, and turned out and, and just beaten up, even if you don't have any kids. No, I will not terrorize the neighborhood. I will not be another statistic. And I will not be another stereotype. No, I will not flunk out of class or skip class in order to be seen as among the cool kids. No, I will not do what my dad did, my, my dad Day Day did, my granddad Cool Breeze did by being mediocre at best and being failures at worst. And no, I will go to college, I will go to a trade school, I will go to the military, or I will have my own legitimate business. No, I, I will not. I, I will not fall in line with the Negro script. Yes, we will have plenty of these sleeper cells, these EL sleeper cells, hushed. Some cases physically. And there will be sacrifices, I hate to say it. Because that is how heinous the community is. But if you get enough of these sleeper cells going off, you will start seeing a resistance. A resistance that will put the community tie on edge. And maybe, just maybe, make the community tie a community once again. Everyone else out there, always bet on X.